attacks. It's less here. Uh, and I want to uh, go ahead and uh, make a tier list video after uh, I've played in quite a few games now of Shadowverse. I've played uh, at least three champion showdowns, uh, one qualifier, and uh, many, many locals, as well as uh, a lot of remote tool games against uh, decently good players in general. Uh, I think I have uh, a basic understanding of the game and uh, I think I have like uh, what it takes to uh, know a bit more of the meta and uh, rate what I feel is like what's currently the best decks in uh, Shadowverse Evolved set 1 so Advent of Genesis only so up first uh, I think the best deck well, uh, I'll, I'll duplicate this. So, in within tiers, the one that's closest to the left will be the best deck uh, of that tier. So, even in tiers, I think there's differences. So, uh, up first, in tier 1, and at the very, very left of tier 1, I'm going to have a Ramp Dragon. The reason why I put uh, Ramp Dragon in tier 1, I think everybody knows. I think Ramp Dragon just has uh, way too much, like, high roll potential and power built into the deck what do i mean by that so uh let's say the dragoncraft player goes first and they dragon or go on two so now they're permanently two play points ahead of you and uh and now on turn five they're they're putting out their seven drops and, and that that's crazy right and even more than that uh dragon after overflow uh their stuff become really unfair stat wise for example dragon guard is a six seven for four that's so hard to remove uh that's so much stats like no no deck can put that much stats out for that little cost uh shapeshifter is a five five for two right like they can start playing out cards that are simply extremely over stat once overflow hits and it's not even like they're weak before overflow a shapeshifter before overflow can still one for one with everything in the game a dragon guard before overflow is a very very standard statted ward that can be played as as soon as the turn after uh oracle and they have cards like Dragon Warrior to help them maintain tempo, and cards like Path to Purgatory to swing them back into the game if they're low on cards. The ability to just be ahead in play points in this game is so much more dire due to the fact that Dragon also has the best removal in the game. For example, uh, why is Windblast a not quick spell when it can only deal 4 when there's spell chain 10, while Blazing Breath is a quick spell? deck deals four when you're in overflow in my opinion it's way easier to be an overflow in dragon than spell chain 10 in rune yet one is quick and one is not uh why is serpent's wrath a quick when it's three mana deal five and oh, in overflow you draw a card but onslaught in sword is not quick it's also a three mana deal five but i get to get get a knight in my ex zone is getting a, a one one in your ex zone that you still have to pay for better than drawing a card in overflow i don't think so I, I think even without being an overflow serpent's wrath being just quick deal five is way better than onslaught like why is dragon the the quality of cards in dragon just so much higher why I, I really don't get it um yeah so like even if a deck has a really good matchup into the ramp dragon deck they can still lose simply by the dragon just drawing well they don't even have to draw perfect, they just have to curve you out. For example, um, D-Shift will lose to multiple Fortes. A lot of things will lose to multiple Fortes. If the dragon ramps up to Forte, and they hold up one removal spell for the card that you're evolving into it, suddenly, you're going to take 14 damage from this Forte, right? Like, it, it, it's up to the dragon player to know what to do more than the other player sometimes. Like, for example, like, I, I don't, a lot of the time, the agency's on the dragon player to, to mess up. more than um the opponent playing well so uh from all that uh i'll put um dragon as the best deck in sve uh set one and the deck to beat for sure <clears throat> now uh everybody knows that uh, i myself is an earthright player earthright is my main deck and uh it's the deck that i compete with after like playing a plethora of decks i'm gonna put earthright 
in, in, in the tier 1 status right behind Ram Dragon. Now, I think a lot of people might say I'm biased, but hear me out here. What are the best decks right now in Dra in Shadowverse Evolve? What are the most popular decks? It's it's Dragon and Sword, is it not? Sword is the cheapest deck to build, and Sword is decently aggro and has good 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 monster quality, and Dragon is just the best deck. Well, Earthrite has a good matchup into Sword because it puts up a lot of wards, and it also has a good matchup into Dragon due to uh, the six health threshold. All of Earthrite's followers that are dangerous are more than six health, meaning that uh, most of Dragon's removal which only deal 5 damage, can't remove them. And if Dragon uh, excessively ramps in the early game or doesn't develop enough pressure, Earthrite can quickly end the game with an Ancient Alchemist that's going out of control. And if a Dragon ramps and doesn't, doesn't put up enough aggression, uh, Earthrite, when they get to the higher mana totals, they're no longer scared of Dragon, as Erasmus trades very well into every other follower in Dragon, and uh, Juno Secret Laboratory can consistently stop can chump block the four chains and the genesis is meaning that they never really get a free chance to swing face with their storm followers and uh even against like decks like aggro like aggro abyss or um mid-range sword aggro sword like any storm form of sword in general it's favorite it's a favorite matchup and even into decks like haven which pack a lot of removal they can't remove the board and heal but earthright can build a board and deal damage to face at the same time that's like the difference if i play an ancient alchemist and i evolve and i make three golems that's nine damage to your face and a, and a board but you as the haven player can only clear the board or heal in most situations you can't both clear the board and heal but so like earthright being a deck that can build both build a board and deal damage is is, is so broken in set one I'm sure a lot of the people who have played a lot of games will realize how strong Earthrite actually is. Yep. And now, uh, these are all the decks I feel like are, in, are, are definitely Tier 1. I'm going to move down to Tier 2. And at the start of Tier 2, I'm going to put... Uh, I'm going to put the Forest deck. Uh, uh, so, based on how I... How I've like played and played uh, against uh, Forest. I feel like mid range decks in general are very very favored in, in this format because mid range decks can go can go on the defensive against aggro decks, and they can go on the aggressive against control decks. And Forest has a 15 damage threshold with five thorn bursts, <clears throat> and also can run additional win conditions like Silverbolt or Rhinoceros. And uh, having access to Elf Child May and Ancient Elf makes their aggro matchup impeccable. Like that matchup is like if you play Aggro Abyss or Aggro Sword into the Forest, you know you know how it feels when they go Elf Child May Ancient Elf Elf Child May Ancient Elf. That matchup just feels unwinnable, right? But at the same time, if you're playing let's, let's say Earthrite into it, uh, they can honestly if they swing face with that five five Ancient Elf even one time, you're in the threshold for them to kill you on turn nine with Thorn Bursts. Uh, Rose Queen being able to uh, refill your mana so that they can play one Thorn Burst out early means that they can play all four Thorn Bursts out the next turn. So decks without healing are like on, on basically on a clock against Forest if they pull off the Aria into Rose Queen combo. And they definitely have the, the cycling and the healing and the board clear necessary to do that. Uh, Forest is not a very um, popular class by any means, but Forest is definitely a really powerful class. I'm sure that the players who have played enough will realize like how easy it is to be in the threshold for forests to just kill you. <clears throat> and the next deck I'm going to put in the tier 2 spot is uh, Holy Sentinel Haven. Uh, Holy Sentinel Haven is a deck that really relies on the 5 drop amulet Holy Sentinel uh, to create like a, a, a big board and I feel like that's fine because uh number one it's one of the only classes that has access to big aoe and it has it has access to uh, healing as well uh so it has actually has the win condition against dragon where it can run dragon out of cards like dragon plays a threat and haven clears a threat dragon plays another threat haven plays another threat and it has a good matchup into shift in that you can just hold up removal 
and ships can never shift you or else they run out you can just like double execute or like double acolyte slight against their golems and they just don't kill you and uh there's like a bunch of things they can do and also the existence of hair means that the turn they play holy fentanyl they can still get a fork reward out and in general just apply a lot of pressure so that's why i'm putting this deck at tier two uh alongside that i'm also gonna put aggro abyss i think aggro abyss is is pretty good right now because number one if dragon doesn't open up perfect against you it's very possible that you can just like out of hand damage them and kill them before turn six uh dark general being a five five with storm also like cards like razory claw ambling wraith uh young necromancer and um phantom how there's so much out of hand damage and most like most decks they can't just they, they just can't deal with out of hand damage and and aggro abyss just has so much of that and aggro abyss has a really good synergy with path to purgatory and all that and i so i think aggro abyss like i honestly think it's like the superior deck like superior aggro deck obviously i, I feel like aggro abyss if you play against sword like you're in a bit of trouble because like aggro abyss you aggro yourself to aggro them and your followers aren't as good statted as swords followers but it, it, it's just like better matchups, I feel like. Because decks that are scared of aggro are much more scared of aggro abyss than aggro sword. Because uh, let's say I'm against a uh, banner sword and it's turn 8 and they don't have banner. With 8, if I'm at 8 HP, I will never die against sword without banner on turn 8. But if I'm at 8 HP against aggro abyss on turn 6, I might die. Because Razor into Dark General is just 8 damage right there. But sword doesn't have like. 4 mana deal 5, Storm. They don't have that. Their their 5 Storm is too bulky. It costs 6. You know what I mean? Like, Sword has a lot more fair, like, out of damage. Sword might have a bigger board, but if I just clear their board, they're, they're not, like, very dishonest with the damage they have in hand. Now, speaking of Sword, I think what's next is, uh, Midrange Sword. Well, not Midrange Sword. It's like, uh, it's like a Banner Sword, but, uh, more on the Midrange side of things than the aggro side of things uh because uh cards like shadowed assassin and uh, erd are like much more viable into dragon because if you play full aggro you'll find that like if dragon opens dragon warrior the game's just unplayable like you definitely can't race shenlong you can't you can't race junos you can't race anything <laughs> like uh at the start many people thought that this format was aggro orientated and then like <laughs> Everybody just started like building more anti-aggro, and now suddenly aggro is not winning anything. And especially with sword not having as much out of hand damage as abyss, you really need to be winning on board against a lot of the other decks. So uh, shifting to a more mid range play style with banner, of course, is like one of the outs for sword. Like running more Arulias, running uh, like the gem staff Arulia combo, um, playing less aggressive followers, trying to get a fervid on field. Just using the fact that you have the best turn three tempo play in floral fencer into like uh more threats like using cost cards like shadowed assassin and nerd to trade favorably uh is actually a, a really decent like plan for sword <coughs> continue <coughs> uh and now we're gonna move on to what i think is tier three we'll start tier three with uh ward haven uh ward haven is a haven deck that doesn't use as much amulets it only uses sacred flea and guardian sun and the rest of the deck is like wards and storms and whatnot uh unfortunately it just doesn't have a good matchup into dragon uh without like the the tiger stream like dragon just like absolutely crushes this deck so like and it doesn't have really have a good matchup to any of these decks because uh you're not aggressive enough you have no win condition haven is just not in a good spot right now and then after that I'll put D shift. D shift loses to literally everything. Like unless you God Hand, you can't shift before like turn eight. So, and the thing is, with this game, how it goes is, you only have three threats in your deck, and control decks can heal above twenty. What was making shift so strong in the original game was that twenty was the max HP. So you can't heal above that. So if you get three golems they're just dead but being able to heal above 20 means that before you shift me i could have 25 health i can have 30 health even if i have 22 health suddenly three flame destroyers is on is not game 
If me as a Haven deck, I heal to 22, and I just refuse to play any other followers, so your Fiery Embrace can't chip me down, how are you going to win? Oh, you're going to play 3 Golems, and then you're going to shift me? Okay, when you attack me, I'm going to go double Acolyte's Light on your 2 Golems, you only have 1 Golem left, even if you then shift me again, that's only 14 damage, I'm at 26 health, and... You, you might say, then how is Haven going to win the game? I'm going to I'm gonna win the game by decking you out. You're a runecraft. In the early game, you definitely drew a lot of cards, right? I, I, have let, I have more cards in my deck than you. I will just literally hold up eight play points every single turn. I will keep passing until you deck yourself out. Like, it's unfathomable that D-Shift can lose like that. D-Shift should have an absolute matchup into control. But that's just not the case. Forest can easily heal above 22 and hold a removal. Haven can heal above 22 and hold up removal. Dragon can just fucking kill you with Forte. If I play Forte and I leave a fucking Blazing Breath up and you try to Merlin Evo into my Forte and I get, it's get Blazing Breath, it's game over. You lose. Your only way of clearing Forte before Flame Destroyer hits zero is with Merlin Evolve. Penguin is not big enough. So as long as I have seven play points, I just Forte Evo and I hold Blazing Breath. You Merlin Evo? Eye blazing breath game's over it, it's simple as that like I, I can't believe like the sex is so trash and also you lose to all the aggro too you auto lose the aggro abyss most of the time you lose the aggro sword like what are you favored against okay you might be favored against mid-range abyss but mid-range abyss is not a good deck right like you're, you're even too slow for earth right like earth, i make a four six on three what are you gonna do you can't do anything. You're, you're still sorcery caching for your combo. That's just not how the game works. This, this deck just sucks. <laughs> Next, uh, I'm going to put... Uh, it's going to be a tie between Titania Sanctuary, uh, Forest, and uh, Banner's Aggro Sword. Like, pure Aggro Sword. Uh, I'm putting those here because there's not 40 good Aggro cards in this format. There's only set 1 in neutral cards and... Uh, class cards and only one structure deck there's not enough good cards there's not 40 good aggro cards yet so a pure aggro deck doesn't really exist for these two classes unfortunately like you at banner sword still runs uh otohime that's like a concession you have to make because you just don't have 40 good cards for aggro and because of that the the aggro decks are, are just not as good as the other decks that can play like mid-range or control cards uh titania sanctuary while on paper it's good but Titania Sanctuary, unlike Banner, only buffs Pixie's token followers, and it takes up a slot on your board for a swarm deck. Like, unlike Banner decks that can play, like, higher quality followers, the only thing Titania's buffs is the Pixie cards. Like, and I get that Blessed Fairy Dancer can make your cards big, but at that point, Dragon has already ramped to 5 damage AoEs. Like, that, that, that's not going to cut it. Against Haven, like, 3-3 three is not going to cut it. You're going to get Themist. Against, like, like forest like it's gonna get hit pinged by maze right against rune rune has removal right mythical golem like earth has earth right has like uh the the two damage aoe the three damage aoe you have to hit the golems that's just not how the game works and then finally i have mid-range of this at tier three um the deck is not good enough there's not enough mid-range tools yeah death's breath medusa it's cool you're just not doing enough as your as, as your opponent you can allo card me six times in a row that's not gonna kill me right so yeah oh uh, tier one ramp dragon earth right tier two uh um forest combo uh holy sentinel aggro uh, aggro abyss mid-range sword tier three ward haven uh t shift uh the titania sanctuary pure aggro banner and mid-range abyss uh i don't think uh flame and glass is a real deck on paper if you high roll me with flame on four flame on three glass on four like it, it feels like it's not even that good like at that point it's an execute range you spent three play points like you spent like if your entire deck is built around that and like your flaming glass is executed what happens like i don't know and the card's horrible to draw like drawing a flaming glass on, on in your hand it just feels bad right you have to like glass shuffle it back into your deck you don't really want to do that so like i don't think it's real obviously i can be proven wrong yeah if you think there's any like differences uh, of my opinion feel free to comment like uh, down below um what you think is different and what do you think and yeah make sure to like and subscribe i guess uh please like tell me what you want to see next and 
Thank you very much.